We're back, baby. Gotta get some lighting in here. There we go. We're back with another episode, another part, part 18, guys. Woo! We are so close to finishing this book. I think we're gonna finish it in three days if I read every day. Today we're getting done three chapters. Yesterday we got done three chapters. And tomorrow I'm gonna try and at least read two. So. Today we're going to read the chapters called Other Fruits, Cruciferous Vegetables, and Greens. So those are the three chapters we're reading. You guys know the drill. I'm not here to talk about anything else but this book, so we're going to jump right in. Alright, chapter something. Other Fruits. I forget which um, number chapter we're on, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. And of course, here we go. We're on page 296, Other Fruits. Dr. Gregor's favorite other fruits. Where are my sticky notes? Handy dandy sticky notes. This whole page is getting a sticky note. Off to a good start, boys. Already on with a sticky note. Apples, dried apricots. Ooh, I love apricots, especially dried apricots. I wonder what he says versus dried and regular fruit and which has more nutrition. Let's find out. Avocados, bananas. I'm just shocked that he puts bananas on this list as his favorite because he said how little potassium they actually have. But I guess they have other nutrients, so that's going to be interesting to read more about. Cantaloupe. Clementines, ooh, I love clementines. Dates, dried figs, grapefruit, honeydew, kiwi fruit, lemons, limes, lychees. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. I don't know how to pronounce it. L y c h e e s. Lychees, lychees, whatever. Mangoes, ooh, love me some mangoes. Nectarines, oranges, bro. He's just naming all the delicious fruit, and it's making me hungry. Especially black plums. Ooh. Pluots? Never heard of that before. P-L-U-O-T-S. Pomegranate, prunes, tangerines, and watermelon. And this is where I don't like him, because he doesn't name dragon fruit or passion fruit. I like dragon fruit the best. Oh. So, serving sizes. One medium-sized fruit. One cup cut up fruit and one fourth cup dried fruit a day daily recommendations three servings per day now i wonder if he means one medium-sized fruit one cup cut up fruit and one fourth cup dried fruit does that count as one serving or is like each a serving size and you should do three servings a day Interesting. I think each is a serving size and you should do three servings a day. That's just my interpretation of it, but I could be wrong. 
It took years for nearly 500 researchers from more than 300 institutions in 50 countries to develop the 2010 Global Burden of Disease Study. Funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, it is the largest an analysis of risk factors for death and disease in history. In the United States, the massive study determined that the leading cause of both death and disability was the American diet, following by, followed by smoking. What did they determine to be the worst aspect about our diet? Not eating enough fruit. Don't limit yourself to eating fruit just the way it comes plucked off the tree. Although fruit makes for a perfect quick snack. Don't forget that it can be cooked as well. Think baked apples, poached pears, and grilled pineapple. Ooh. I'm highlighting that. Baked apples, poached pears, and grilled pineapples. If you like drinking your fruit, blending is better than juicing to preserve nutrition. Juicing removes more than just fiber. Most of the polyphenol phytonutrients, see chapter 3, in fruits and vegetables appear to be bound to the fiber and are only liberated from, for absorption by the friendly flora in your gut. When you merely drink the juice, you lose out on the fiber and the nutrition that was attached to it. Even just cloudy apple juice, which retains a bit of the fruit fiber, appears to have nearly triple the phenols compared to clear apple juice. Okay, so cloudy apple juice is what we're going to be drinking from now on. Whereas greater consumption of whole fruits has been associated with a lower likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes, Interesting. Harvard University researchers found the greater juice consumption was associated with higher diabetes risk. So by choosing yellow light sources of fruit, like juice or jelly, you may not only be missing out on the nutrients, but actively working against your health. Jelly too? Jellies or jams? Damn. I need to annotate that. Jelly slash jam and research more into it. Yeah, sticky notes got caught on me. An apple a day. Anyone who says they don't have the time to eat healthfully has never met an apple, has never met an apple. Talk about a convenience food. For those who grew up in a world dominated by Red Delicious and Granny Smith, I'm happy to report there are thousands of varieties. Health-wise, crab apples, gross. Probably top the charts. But taste-wise, my personal favorite is Honey Crisp. Or, health-wise, crab apples, gross, probably top the charts. So crab apples, interesting. But taste-wise, my, fav my personal favorite is Honey Crisp. Or, any pink, pick your own variety I can find locally. If you've never tried an apple you picked right off a tree, you don't know what you're missing. Falling, failing that... Farmers markets can offer good deals on great produce. My family buys apples by the half bushel. All right, so we're going to highlight crab apples and honey crisp. Dates. Not like going on a date, but like the food dates. D A T E S. My favorite fruit snack in the fall and winter is apple slices with dates for the perfect mix of tart and sweet. I've never tried that. Growing up, I never liked dates. They tasted dry and kind of waxy. But then I discovered there were soft, plump, moist varieties that didn't taste like the chalky ones that haunted my childhood. Brahi dates, for example, are, the, are wet and sticky. But when frozen, they acquire the taste and chew of caramel candy. Oof. That sounds good. Seriously, paired with my honey crisp, it's like eating a butterscotch flavored caramel apple. Oh my god. Locally, you should be able to find decent medjool dates in Middle Eastern grocery stores in many natural food markets, but for the too moist to be sold commercially varieties, You'll probably have to shop online. Medjool dates. I have tried dates from most of the major online retailers and I always go back to ordering from the date people. 
A small farm in California. I am averse to commercial endorsements, but I've never tasted consistently better dates. I am averse to commercial endorsements, but I've never tasted consistently better dates from any other source, although Black Sphinx dates from Phoenix come close. Phoenix, Arizona, baby. Date People's annual harvest comes in around my birthday in October. My birthday's in October, too. Let's go. And I always splurge as a present to myself and get a big box to put in our freezer. Olives and olive oil. Olives and extra virgin olive oil are yellow light foods. Olive consumption should be minimized because they are soaked in brine. A dozen large olives could take up nearly half your recommended sodium limit for the entire day. Oh my goodness, I need to text Jenny, one of my friends, and ask her about the olive alternative. I think it was croutons or curtains or... I forget what you put in my salad. All right, where were we? Soaked in brine, a dozen large olives could take up nearly half your recommended sodium limit for an entire day. Olive oil is sodium free, but most of its nutrition has been removed. You can think of extra virgin olive oil as a little like fruit juice. It has nutrients, but the calories you get are relatively empty compared to those from the whole fruit. Olives are, after all, fruits. Interesting. Freshly squeezed olive juice already has less nutrition than the whole fruit, but I wonder why olives are soaked in brine. Olive, okay, freshly squeezed olive juice already has less nutrition than the whole fruit, but then, then olive oil producers also throw away the olive wastewater, which contains the water-soluble nutrients. As a result, you end up getting just a small fraction of the nutrition of the whole fruit by the time extra virgin olive oil is bottled. Refined olive oil, non-virgin, is even worse. I would classify it along with other vegetable oils as red light foods as they offer such scant nutrition for the heavy caloric loads. One tablespoon of oil can contain more than 100 calories without filling you up. Compare that single tablespoon to 100 calorie serving sizes of other foods on page 110. I think of oil as the table sugar of the fat kingdom. Similarly, similar to the way manufacturers take healthy foods like beets and throw out all their nutrition to make sugar, they take wholesome corn and scorch earth it down to corn oil. Like sugar, corn oil calories make, may be worse than just empty. In chapter one, I touched on the impairment of artery function that can occur within hours of eating red light fare, like fast food and cheesecake. The same detrimental effect happens after the consumption of olive oil and other oils, but not after eating green light sources of fat like nuts. Even extra virgin olive oil may impair your arteries, ability to relax and dilate normally. So like any yellow light food, it uses it use should be curtailed. It use should be curtailed. C U R T A I L E D. That's a new word for me. Cooking without oil is surprisingly easy. To keep foods from sticking, you can saute in wine. Bet. Sherry, both vin broth Sherry, broth, vinegar, or just plain water. For baking, I've successfully used green light ingredients such as mashed bananas or avocado soaked prunes and even canned pumpkin to substitute for oil. By the way, that's avocado, comma, soaked prunes and even canned pumpkin to substitute for oil. Mashed bananas, interesting.
to provide a similar moistiness. The reduction of yellow light foods is all about frequency and quantity. If you're going to trek outside the green zone, my advice is simple. Make it count. Don't waste precious indulgences on crappy food. I don't want to sound like a food snob, but if you're going to eat something less than maximal, maximally health, I say pamper yourself and truly relish it. When I eat olives, there is no way I'm going to eat those waxy black abominations in a can. I'm going to slice up some purple kalamatas that's actually, that actually have some flavor. If you're going to spoil yourself once in a while, I say do it right. Mangoes. I love mangoes. Mangoes are my favorite fruit. Same. We have a lot of common, this author and me. Hmm. Interesting. Mangoes are my favorite fruit. Treat during spring and summer. Favorite fruit treat during spring and summer. But you have to know where to look to get the good ones. Check out Hispanic markets and Indian grocery stores. The difference between a mango from Walmart and one from an Indian spice store is like the difference between a hard, pale, tasteless pink tomato and a ripe, flavorful farm stand heirloom. You should be able to smell the mango at arm's length. My favorite way to eat a mango is like sp sipping a Capri Sun drink pouch. When the fruit gets soft and ripe, I roll it between my palms, kneading it with my fingers until it becomes essentially liquid pulp in a pouch. Interesting. I've never done it that way. I wonder if it would, like, squish out the skin. Um... Then I nip off the tip with my teeth, gently squeeze and suck the mango right out of its peel. Oh, I can't wait to try that. That sounds fire. Watermelon. Are some whole fruits better than others? Berries contain the most antioxidants, whereas melons wall wallow down around iceberg lettuce levels. Watermelon seeds, on the other hand, have pretty respectable antioxidant levels. Interesting. Watermelon seeds. So I try to avoid seedless varieties. A spoonful of watermelon seeds may have as many antioxidants as a whole cup of melon balls. Seedless or not, watermelon contains a compound called citrulline, S-I-T-R-U-L-L-I-N-E, that can boost the activity of the enzyme responsible for dilating the blood vessels and the penis. Interesting. That results in erections. A group of Italian researchers found that citrulline supplementation at the level of five servings of red watermelon a day improved erection hardiness in men with mild erectile dysfunction. Well, boys, guess we're eating more watermelon. <laughs> I have issues. Allowing for a 68% increase in more... In monthly intercourse frequency, yellow watermelon has four times more citrulline. <sighs> Though, so just above about one wedge a day, one sixteenth of a modest melon may have the same effect. If this information is new to you, perhaps it's because the advertising budgets of drug companies like Pfizer, which rake up rake in billions of dollars each year for the sale of erectile dysfunction drugs are about a thousand times that of an entire budget of the National Watermelon Promotion Board. Dried fruit. This is what I need to know. I love dried mangoes. Whew, didn't even know you could dry mangoes. God damn. But they are hard to find without added sugar. I remember naively asking my friend in the food business why the industry felt the need to sugar up an already sweet fruit, added weight, 
in quotations. He explained, Just as poultry processes inject salt water into chickens to add water weight, processed food companies often use sugar as cheap way to bulk up products sold by the pound. This made me determined to make my own. I bought an inexpensive dehydrator from eBay, and I am so glad I did. Dehydrator. I want one of those for Christmas. Fruit is about 90% water, so imagine intensifying the flavor of a fresh ripe mango tenfold by blowing mango. Mind blowing. Mangoes can be a messy pain to peel, but once that's done, I slice them about a centimeter thick and sprinkle them with chia seeds before putting them in the dehydrator. If I'm t taking them on a plane or a hike, I'll dry them completely otherwise. I only wait until just the outside is dry, the outer layer encrusted with chia. Gets a crispy texture while the core remains moist and ready to burst. It's the kind of thing I can, can't eat while watching a movie or reading a book. It tastes so good, I just have to stop, close my eyes, and savor it. Bro, I want one so bad. I'm literally buying a dehydrator today. If not, the next time I get paid, because I'm broke as fuck right now. Ugh, that sounds so good. I also like drying thin apple slices. I either sprinkle them with cinnamon or rub them freshly with grated ginger. That sounds like an interesting combo. They can be just dried until chewy or completely dehydrated into crunchy apple chips. Eating a dozen dried apple rings a day may drop LDL cholesterols by 16% within 3 months and 24% within 6 months. If you buy dried fruit, I recommend choosing unsulfured varieties. Sulfur-containing preservatives such as sulfur dioxide, dioxide in dried fruit and sulfites in wine can f form hydrogen sulfide in your gut. This is, rot this is the rotten egg gas implicated in the development of the inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis. The main source of hydrogen sulfide is the metabolism of animal protein. But you can get further lower you can further lower your exposure by avoiding sulfur additives, either by reading labels or choosing organic, in which such preservatives are per forbidden. The sulfur naturally contained in cruciferous vegetables does not appear to elevate col colitis risk, so feel free to add kale chips to your healthy snacking menu. Prescribing kiwi fruit. There appears to be a dis. I love kiwi, by the way. A disappropriate, disproportionate number of articles in the medical literature about the clinical benefits of kiwi fruit. Is that because they are better than other fruits, or is it because the kiwi industry has more research dollars? One country, New Zealand, holds a substantial share of the global kiwi market. So it's in its best interest to underwrite research on the fruit. As a result, there is no shortage of papers touting the benefits of kiwi fruit. Kiwi is one of the fruits I've prescribed to my patients with insomnia. To an interesting. To an hour before bedtime appears to significantly improve sleep onset. Duration and efficiency. And also, to help with constipation-type irritability bowel syndrome, two kiwi fruit a day seem to significantly improve bowel function. Kiwi certainly seems like a better option than the leading IBS drug, which was pulled from the market for apparently killing too many people. Kiwi fruit also appears to, be, to benefit immune function. Preschoolers... Interesting. I love Siberian kiwis the best, but I haven't been able to find them. I need to talk to my friend Fred. Preschoolers randomized to eat gold kiwi fruits every day appear to cut their risk contracting a cold or flu-like illness. Didn't even know there were such things as gold kiwi fruits. 
nearly in half compared to those randomly selected to eat bananas instead. Wow. A similar experiment was tried on elderly individuals, another high-risk group. Those in the banana control group who got an upper respiratory tract infection suffered for about five days with a sore throat and congestion compared to the kiwi fruit eaters who felt better after just a day or two. About 1 in 130 children may be allergic to kiwi fruit, though, which may rank kiwis as the third most common food allergy, second only to milk and eggs. Wow. More people are allergic than kiwi than nuts? Interesting. I didn't know eggs was up there, too. So they aren't... They are not for everyone. Let's see. It said 1 in 130 children. I hope that's not me. Citrus. Adding citrus zest to your meals not only adds flavor, flavor aroma, and a bit of culinary flair, but also nutrition. Citrus zest... lives up to its name in terms of enlivening dishes. It's time to get zesty. And it may do the same to your DNA repair capabilities. On average, humans appear to suffer 800 hits to their DNA per hour. If not fixed, this can cause mutations that give rise to cancer. Comparing identical and Fraternal twins, researchers have determined that only part of your DNA repair function is determined genetically. The rest may be under your control. The dietary factor found best able to boost DNA repair was citrus fruit. Wow. Within 200, within two hours, big difference there. Within two hours of consuming citrus, your DNA becomes significantly more resistant to damage. Which may help, I'm about to eat an orange right now, which may help why citrus consumption is associated, help explain why citrus consumption is associated with lower risk of breast cancer. Some of the citrus compound thought responsible which concentrate in the breast and enhance DNA repair are found in the peel, though this may be why people who eat at least some citrus appeal appear to have lower skin cancer rates than those who don't. Stick with the whole fruit because supplements don't appear to boost DNA repair. The citrus juice doesn't appear to help either. In fact, drinking orange juice every morning may even increase skin cancer risk. Green light forms of foods always seem to be the best. And you can eat citrus in an even less processed way by slipping some of the rind into your diet through zesting. I like to freeze lemons, limes, and oranges whole so we always have them on hand to grate. Onto meals that could use a little zing. My only whole citrus caveat... Inform your physician if you are eat, if you eat grapefruit. I don't even like grapefruit. This fruit can suppress the enzymes that help clear more than half commonly prescribed drugs. And less drug clearance, interesting, means high drug higher drug levels in the body. This may actually be good if you want a better caffeine buzz from your morning coffee, or if your doctor wants to help. You save money by boosting the effects of expensive drugs instead of just peeling, peeing them away. Interesting. Morning coffee, eh? Grapefruit and coffee. Maybe I'll start drinking black coffee with grapefruit. That sounds not half bad. Or, if your doctor wants to help you save money by boosting the effects of expensive drugs instead of just peeing them away. But, higher drug levels may also mean higher risk of side effects. So if you're regularly eating grapefruits, your physician may want to change your perspective, your prescription, or alter the dosing. Exotic fruits. The medical school I attended sits in the middle of Boston, Ch Chinatown. I remember the first time I pers pursued the, pr the produce aisle at a large Asian supermarket. Boston's Chinatown? I didn't even know Boston had a Chinatown. I'm going. 
with options for bizarre looking dragon fruit to triple like ram buttons. He finally mentioned dragon fruit. I felt like I was on another planet. Every week I tried something new. Some stuck with me. I still sneak liches into the movies. Lychees. L-Y-C-H-E-E-S. But others were one-time affairs. Let me share with you... The durian incident. Bro, durians are elephants' favorite snacks. It's one of the most exotic fruits ever. They eat the fruit whole. It tastes like ice cream only after you've acquired the taste. Other than that, it can taste super bitter. Durians are the most badass of all fruits. Imagine a five-pound football covered in sharp spikes like some medieval mace. What other fruits could be described in the medical literature as causing severe body injury in papers with titles like Penetrating Ocular Injury by Durian Fruit? And I haven't even gotten to the most distinctive quality, its smell. With an odor perhaps best described as pig shit, terp... <laughs> Serpentine and onions garnish with a gym sock. God damn. Durian fruits are banned from many public spaces, like subways and airports, in Southeast Asia where they are grown. I had to try eating one of these crazy things. Durian fruits are sold frozen. I would soon come to understand why. I took one back to the campus and managed to hack off a piece without impaling myself with a spike. The fruit tasted like a caramelized onion popsicle. That's gross. A caramelized onion popsicle. I let I left the rest in my locker. Big mistake. I arrived the next day to find the entire floor of the medical center, including the dean's office, cornered off. They were going locker to locker, cutting off all the locks, searching in vain for the cause of a stench. <laughs> oh, where was I? Oh, searching in vain for the cause of a stench so overpowering you couldn't even locate it. I can't. It was like a fog of stink. Hospital staff s seriously thought someone had stolen body parts from the gross autonomy cadaver lab. And then it struck me. Uh-oh. The Dury and I had thawed when I realized it was all my fault. I crawled to the dean to beg for forgiveness. I already had a history of run-ins with the administration over issues I had raised about the curriculum. And now this... I'll never forget what he said to me that day. Why am I not surprised you had something to do with this? <laughs> oh, this is so good. When adding as much fruit as possible to your diet, you certainly don't have to seek out weapon-grade stinky fruit. But you also ha don't have to stick with the same old, same old. Treat yourself. Have fun. Sampling the many varieties of the many different fruits around. How lovely it can be to stroll through your farmer's market on a weekend and pick up locally grown fruits that you can zest onto your meals, blend into smoothies, chew when dried, incorporate into your favorite dishes. I wonder what other fruits are best to zest. Or best of all, bite right into. The opportunities are ripe for the picking. Cruciferous vegetables, the next chapter we have begun. Dr. Gregor's favorite cruciferous vegetables. Sticky note, I need you. Arugula, bok choy, bok chow, bok choy, whichever one, tomato, tomato. Excuse me. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, collard greens, horseradish, interesting. Kale, black, green, and red. Mustard greens, radishes, turnip greens, and watercress. Love watercress. Serving size. One half cup chopped, 
one fourth cup Brussels sprouts or broccoli sprouts, one tablespoon horseradish. Daily recommendations, one serving per day. When I used to teach medical students at Tufts, you taught at Tufts? That's sick. I gave a lecture about this amazing new therapeutic called I... Il... O Corb? I L O C C O R B. I talked. I talk about all the evidence supporting it, the great things it could do, and its excellent safety profile. Just as the students would start scrambling to buy stock in the company and prescribe it to their future patients, I do the big reveal, apologizing for my dyslexia. I would admit that I'd gotten it backward. All this time, I had been talking about broccoli. <laughs> he spelled it backwards. That's funny. I've mentioned broccoli more than any other food in this book, and for good reason. We've seen how cruciferous vegetables like broccoli can potentially prevent DNA damage and metata metastatic cancer spread in Chapter 2. Activate defense against pathogens and pollutants in Chapter 5. Help to prevent lymphoma in Chapter 9. Boost your liver detox enzymes and target breast cancer stem cells in Chapter 11. And reduce the risk for, of prostate cancer progression in Chapter 13. The component reasonable for these benefits in, is thought to be cephalophane, which is formed almost exclusively in cruciferous vegetables. This is why they get their own spot on the Daily Dozen. Beyond being a promising anti-cancer agent, cephalophane may also help protect your brain and your eyesight, reduce nasal allergy inflammation, manage type 2 diabetes, and was recently found to successfully help treat autism. Shut the fuck up. A placebo-controlled double-blind randomized trial of boys with autism found that about two to three cruciferous vegetable servings worth of sulfolophane a day improved social interaction. How do you even do a study like that? Abnormal behavior and verbal communication within a matter of weeks. The researchers primarily, primarily from Harvard University and John Hopkins University suggest that the effect might be due to sulfolophane role as a detoxicant. Strategies to enhance sulfolophane formation. The formation of sulfolophane in cruciferous vegetables is like a chemical flare reaction. It requires the mixing of precursor compounds with an enzyme called myrosinase, M-Y-R-O-S-I-N-A-S-E, which is inactiva inactivated by cooking. Why is it inactivated? Oh, it's inactivated by cooking. Okay. Wow. Though microwave broccoli appears to retain some cancer-fighting capacity, this may explain why we see dramatic suppression of test tube cancer cell growth by raw broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, but hardly any reaction when they are cooked. Huh. Interesting. Microwave broccoli appears to retain some cancer fighting capacity. Maybe microwaving isn't all that bad. But who wants to eat raw? Oh, wait, 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 I skipped a line. This may explain why we see dramatic suppression in test tube cancer cell growth by raw broccoli, crucifer, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts, but hardly any reaction when they are cooked. But who wants to eat raw Brussels sprouts? Not me. Thankfully, there are ways to get the benefits of raw vegetables in cooked form. Biting into broccoli is like snapping that chemical flare. When raw broccoli or any other cruciferous vegetables is chopped or chewed, the sulfolophane pre precursor mixes with the my myrosinase enzyme called sulfolophane, and sulfolophane is created. Sorry, As the vegetable sits on the cutting board or lies in your upper stomach waiting to be digested, Though the enzyme is destroyed by cooking, both the precursor and the final product are resistant to heat. So here's the trick. Use what I call the hack and hold technique. Maybe I should call it whack and wait.
Are you going to explain the technique or no? If you chop the broccoli or Brussels sprouts, kale, collards, cauliflower, or any other cruciferous vegetable, and then wait 40 minutes, you can cook it as much as you want. At that point, the sulfalefane has already been made, so the enzyme is no longer needed to achieve maximi maximum benefit. It's already done its job. You can also buy bags of fresh greens and other cruciferous that are pre-chopped or shredded, which can presumably be cooked immediately. Given this understanding, can you see how most people tr prepare broccoli soup incorrectly? Typically, they first cook the broccoli and then blend it. But when you blend it, you are mixing the precursor with the enzyme that's been inactivated by cooking. Do it the opposite order. First blend your veggies and then wait 40 minutes before cooking them. This way, you can maximize the full of fame production. What about frozen broccoli and other cruciferous... Cruciferous... Co Commercially produced frozen broccoli lacks the inabil the ability to form sulfolophane. Interesting. Because the vegetables are blanched, flash cooked, before they are frozen. That's unfortunate. From the very purpose of deactivating for the very purpose of deactivating enzymes. This process prolongs shelf life. But when you take the veggies out of your freezer, the enzyme is inert. At that point, it doesn't matter how much you chop or how long you wait. No sulfolophane is going to be made. This is why fresh kale has been shown to suppress cancer cell growth in vitro up to 10 times better than frozen kale. The frozen cruciferous is still packed with the precursor, though remember, it it's heat resistant. Interesting. You could make lots of sulfolophane from it by adding back some enzyme, but where can you get myrosinase? Scientists buy their, theirs from chemical companies, but you can just walk into any, but you can't, but you can just walk into any grocery store. Mustard greens are also cruciferous vegetables. Wait, what? You could make lots of sulfolophane from it by adding back some enzyme, but where can you get myrosinase? Scientists buy their theirs from chemical companies, but you can't but you can just walk into any grocery store. Mustard greens are also cruciferous vegetables. They grow from mustard seeds which you can buy ground up in, in the spice aisle as mustard powder. If you sprinkled some mustard powder on frozen broccoli that's been cooked, would it start churning out sulfolophane? Yes! Boiling broccoli prevents the formation of any significant levels of sulfolophane due to inactivation of the enzyme. However, the addition of powdered mustard seeds to cooked broccoli significantly increases sulfolophane formation. Then it's almost as good as eating it raw. So if you don't have 40 minutes to spare between chopping and cooking, or if you're using frozen greens, just sprinkle the cruciferous with some mustard powder before you eat them, and you'll be all set. Dakin radishes, regular radishes, horseradish, and wasabi are all cruciferous vegetables. I love wasabi. And may have the same effect. All it appears to take is a pinch to re revitalize sulfolophane production. Bet. You can also add a small amount of fresh greens to your cooked greens. So when I add shreds of purple cabbage to my finished dishes, It's not only adds a beautiful garnish with a delightful crunch, it's filled with sulfolophane producing enzyme. One of my first tasks every morning, every morning used to be chopping greens for the day using my hack and hold technique, but now with the mustard powder plan, I have one less to-do list to do, one less to do on my list. I wish he said one less thing to do on my list. Anyway, horseradish. 
The serving size I offer on page 304 corresponds th roughly to the daily intake required to achieve cancer pre pre preventative levels according to the in in innovative breast surgery study I detailed in chapter 11. As you can see, horseradish has the smallest serving size, which means it's the most concentrated of the cruciferous vegetables. Horseradish, hey? One tablespoon and your daily dozen is down to an everyday 11. Wait. One tablespoon and your daily dozen is down to an everyday 11. Horseradish can be made into a sauce, relish, or dressing. To score an extra check mark with a kick. It's a great, it's great in mashed potatoes. Or, for healthier options, still mash cauliflower. Just boil cauliflower for about 10 minutes until tender, and then mash with a fork, or potato masher, or puree. What the fuck is a puree? P-U-R-E with an accent mark over it, and then another E. In a food precursor, with some of the reserved cooking liquid until smooth, I season it with pepper, roasted garlic, and a dollop of horseradish, and then pour mushroom gravy on it. Delicious. Now, mushroom gravy sounds delicious. It does, indeed. Roasting cruciferous vegetables. As much as I love mashed cauliflower, roasted cauliflower, or broccoli, for that matter, is my favorite. Wait, what? As much as I love mashed cauliflower, roasted cauliflower, or broccoli, for that matter, is my favorite. Roasting brings out... Interesting. Oh, he's saying roasted cauliflower is my favorite. Roasting brings out a nutty, caramelized flavor. I slice raw cauliflower into steaks. Roast at 400 degree Fahrenheit for about half hour, and then smooth, smoother it in, smother it in a lemon tahini sauce. This guy's a fucking cook. Sometimes I go minimalist and just sprinkle on lemon juice a zest capers. Maybe that's what my friend Jenny was talking about, an alternative to olives. And garlic. This chapter is making me hungry. Damn straight it is. Kale chips. I'll talk about some of the more traditional ways I prepare greens in the next section, but kale chips deserve a special mention. You can use a dehydrator if you have one. But I often don't have the patience. When I'm in the mood for kale chips, I want them now. They can be as simple as one ingredient, kale. Pull the leaves off the stems and tear it into large pieces. Make sure that they are dry or they'll stem rather than crisp. Lay out the torn leaves in a single layer on a cookie tray lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat to prevent sticking and bake at a low temperature, about 250 Fahrenheit, and check often to make sure they don't burn. Within about 20 minutes, they transform into light, crispy snacks, precursors, the levels before you roast them, or add your spices after they are done. There are thousands of recipes online. I recommend starting with an Esselin recipe or her son Rip's website engine to diet.com with kale chips the more you snack the healthier you are interesting cruciferous garnishes similar to the way i use an open can of beans in the fridge as a reminder to try to bean up a, any dish we always have purple or red cabbage in the crisper to help us cruciferize our meals. I slice off shreds of garnish nearly anything within, with them. Red cabbage averages about $1 per pound. Is found as pretty much any grocery store or market. Can last weeks in the fridge 
Wait, what? Red cabbage. Can last weeks in the fridge, though if it does, that means you are not using it enough, exclamation mark, and has more antioxidants per dollar than anything else you'll find in the produce aisle. Interesting. There are healthier foods you can buy, but not for the same amount of money. For example, purple cabbage may have nearly three times the antioxidant power per dollar that blueberries do. In terms of eating healthfully on a budget, purple cabbage can't be beat, or can it? My cabbages. After shopping and discarding the waste, red cabbage averages 45 cents a cup. But broccoli sprouts, if you make them yourself, may be even cheaper. Broccoli sprout seeds can be purchased online or at natural food stores for about $20 per twenty dollars a pound god damn but that makes about 75 cups of sprouts in terms of sulfolafin content that may be around 300 cups of mature broccoli so diy broccoli sprouts provide a green light sulfolafin source for about a nickel a day bro i need more broccoli sprouts sprouting broccoli sprouts is as easy as sprouting lentils Start with a mason jar with a sprouting screen lid. Add a tablespoon of seeds. Let them soak overnight in water. Drain in the morning. And then after that, just quickly rinse and drain twice a day. What he didn't mention is also soaking your seeds in, um, what's it called? Hydrogen peroxide to kill any bacteria. Because when you're sprouting in a mason jar, guys the chances of getting bacterial infections is a lot higher. So make sure when you're sprouting in mason jars, you're you're using hydrogen peroxide to clean the seeds that you're sprouting. I always suggest you sprout in soil because not only does the seed get more nutrients from the soil and the water, in, as opposed to sprouting in a mason jar where the seed can only draw nutrition from the water. So if you do decide to grow it hydroponically, make sure you, you soak those seeds in hydrogen peroxide to, to make sure the risk is minimum. So sprouting broccoli sprouts is as easy as sprouting lentils, okay? Most people wait for about five days until the seeds fully sprout, taking on the look of alpha, alpha sprouts. But new science suggests, so full of fame content peaks for 48 hours after the seeds are initially drained. This makes them even quicker and easier to grow and eat. When I'm not traveling, I usually have a few jars in rotation. It can be the middle of winter and I'm growing my own salad on my kitchen counter. Every day you can't get cups of fresh produce for your family without ever hang having to go to the store. Cruciferous supplements. If you don't like t the taste of cruciferous vegetables, but still want the benefits of sulfolafane, what about the broccoli supplements currently on the market? Researchers recently put a leading commercial supplement to the test. Broccoli, no, it's called Broccomax. B-R-O-C-C-O-M-A-X. That's two C's, by the way. Boasts the equivalent of half pound, boasts the equivalent of a half pound of broccoli in every capsule. Study subjects were given either six capsules a day or a single cup of broccoli sprouts. The supplements hardly worked at all. Wow. Whereas the sprouts boosted blood levels about eight times higher for eight times less cost. The researchers concluded that our data provided further evidence that bioavailability of sulfolafane is dramatically lower when subjects consume broccoli supplements compared to fresh broccoli sprouts. Too much of a good thing? Question mark. This is what I really want to know. If broccoli sprouts are so cheap and effective, why not eat bowels of them? Bowls of them. Bowels of them? Come on now. Bowls of them. A formal safety analysis found no significant adverse effects to about a, one and a half cup a day, but we didn't have data on potential upper limit until the team of Italian researchers tried to push the envelope. They were attempting to come up with an 
venous infusion dose that's a good word intravenous infusion dose to use as chemotherapy and so they wanted to know how high they could go the researchers discovered that blood levels achieved by four or more cups of broccoli sprouts may indeed be detrimental excuse me they concluded however that no harm was found at nutritional attainable concentrations but that's not really true. Broccoli sprouts do have radishly, radishly bite, but someone could theoretically eat four cups of sprouts a day. Wait, what? Broccoli sprouts do have a radishy bite, but someone could theoretically eat four cups of sprouts a day. They don't know health nuts like I know some health nuts. Let me tell you a story. A few years ago, someone came up to me after a lecture in Miami and told me he had heard that wheatgrass juice was good for you. It cleans you out. He had read that, so he thought, why not, and decided to stuff himself with it. He told me how he calculated the volume of the human digestive tract, all 10 yards or so, and proceeded to drink the amount continuously, quart after quart, until he started coming out the other end. Intrigued, I asked him what happened, he looked up at me with an expression that I can only describe as rapturous and said, it was volcanic. <laughs> Rapt rapturous, I guess. It would be hard for me to say too many good things about cruciferous. These vegetables do wonders for your health, from fighting cancer progression and boosting defense against pathogens and pollutants, to helping protect your brain and vision and more. And you can use the this family of veggies as your excuse to play mad scientist in the kitchen manipulating enzyme chemistry to maximize the health benefits now I wonder I'm gonna have to reread this whole chapter or this whole page because I don't I didn't take away if it how much is too much Greens. Chapter Greens. Last chapter of the day, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Dr. Gregor's favorite greens. Arugula, beet greens, collard greens, kale, black, green, and red. Kale, black, green, and red. Mesculine mix, assorted young salad greens. Mustard greens, sorrel, S-O-R-R-E-L. Spinach, Swiss chard, and turnip greens. Serving sizes, one cup raw, one half cup cooked. Daily recommendations, two servings per day. Let's get a sticky note on this start of the chapter, too. Popeye was right when he bragged that he was strong to the finish because he had ate his spinach. Dark green leafy vegetables are the highest foods on the planet, as whole foods go. They offer m the most nutrition per calorie. Just to emphasize the point, there are a study published in the journal Nutrition and Cancer entitled Antioxidant, Anti-Mutagenic, and Anti-Tumor Effects of Pine Needles. Ooh, I love how he's talking about pine needles because pine pollen boosts testosterone levels in athletes. Edible leaves in all their shapes and sizes, it seems, can be healthy foods. In 1777, General George Washington issued a general order that American troops should forage for wild greens growing around their camps, as these vegetables are very conducive to health and tend to prevent all putrid disorders. Since then, however, Americans have declared their independence from greens. <laughs> this guy is so funny. Today, only about 1 in 25 even reach a dozen servings throughout the course of an entire month. God damn. I advise getting more than a dozen servings per week. I'll highlight that. Important caveat. Greens and warfarin. What the heck is warfarin? W-A-R-F-A-R-I-N. In, in 1984, the tragic case of 35-year-old woman unfolded when she failed to inform her physician about her change in diet. Because of her me mechanical heart valve, the woman was on a blood thinner drug called warfarin, 
But because she wanted to lose weight, she started eating a diet composed almost entirely of salad, broccoli, turnip greens, and mustard greens. Five weeks later, she suffered from blood clot and died. If you were on the drug warfare, also known as Comaden, talk with your physician before you increase your greens intake. The drug works both as a rat poison and a human blood thinner by crippling the enzyme that recycles vitamin K. I feel like he should have led the book with that whole fucking passage, bro. Like, what the fuck? The drug works both as rat poison and human blood thinner by crippling the enzyme that recycles vitamin K, which is involved in clotting your blood. If your system gets to an influx of fresh vitamin K, which is concentrating in greens, you can thereby undermine the effectiveness of the drug. You should still be able to eat your greens, but your physician will have to, to titrate the dose of the drug to match your regular green intake. Alright, so this is definitely getting a sticky note because that's important. Eating greens nearly every day may be one of the most powerful steps you can take to prolong your life. Of the all the other food groups analyzed by a team of Harvard University researchers, greens turned out to be associated with the strongest protection against major chronic diseases. <clears throat> Excuse me. Including up to about 20% reduction in risk for both heart attacks and strokes for every additional daily serving. Imagine if there were a pill that could prolong your life and only had good side effects. Everyone would be taking it. It would be making billions of dollars for the lucky drug company that created it. All health plans by law would have to cover it. People for every walk of life, from every walk of life and every corner of the globe would be clamoring for it. But when that pill is just eat your greens, people lose interest. Drug companies have yet to patent broccoli, though Monsanto is trying. Doctors, however, don't have to wait for perky pharmaceutical skill reps to whine, dine, and cajole, cajole, C-A-G-O-L-E, them into prescribing Pfizer brand spinach or GlaxoSmithKline brand collards. Here's my prescription for you. If the full spectrum... Oh, wait, there's a picture here that says greens. Take two servings per mouth daily. Unlimited refills. <laughs> it's a prescription. That's funny. There there it is. There's the picture. Um, it, right there. I don't care if you see it or not. It's okay. We're reading on it anyway. Sorry, that was rude. I'm just tired. If the full spectrum of colorful plant pigments are good for you, why are greens the healthiest? When autumn in New England becomes a flame with brilliant hues, where do th those oranges and yellows come from? They were there all along, actually, just matched by the green pigment chlorophyll that starts to break down in the fall. Similarly, the dark green leaves of vegetables contain many of the other pigment plant pigments all wrapped up in one package. As I mentioned, these colorful compounds are often the very same antioxidant implicated in many of the benefits of fruit and vegetable consumption. So in essence, when you eat your greens, you're eating the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. How to regenerate coenzyme Q10 naturally. That's spelled C-O-enzyme. Coenzyme. One of the reasons greens are some of the healthiest green light foods may be due to their green color. Decades ago, a search began for inceptor, inceptor in quotation mark, molecules that could serve as the body's first line of defense against cancer. Interesting. The theory was that if we could find something that could tightly bind to carcinogens and prevent them from slipping into our DNA, we might be able to, keyword might, to prevent some of the mutations that led to cancer. After years of combining for the existence, after, sorry, after years of combing for the existence of such carcinogen binding molecules, an inceptor was found, chlorophyll. The most ubiquitous plant pigment in the world. It was right under our noses all along, provided we were eating healthfully. In a petri dish, s certain DNA damage in human cells exposed to carcinogen could be totally abolished by chlorophyll. 
But what about in people? In the name of science, volunteers drank a solution of radioactive efflorexin, a carcinogen, with or without spinach chlorophyll. Six cups of spinach worth of chlorophyll, chlorophyll appeared to block out 40% of the carcinogen. Amazing! But that's not all chlorophyll can do. In college, you learn that... I feel like that trial is unethical. But hey, what do I know? People can volunteer. That's up to them. As long as they volunteered, though. That's the important part. In college, you learn that pretty much everything you were taught in high school biology wasn't true. Then in graduate school, you unlearn all the oversimplifications you learned in college. That's fucking ridiculous. Just when you think you understand something in biology, it always seems to get a little bit more complicated than you thought. For example, until recently, we assumed plants and plant-like organisms were the only ones that could directly capture and utilize the energy from the sun. Plants photosynthesize. Animals don't. That's because plants have chlorophyll and animals do not. Well, technically, you do have chlorophyll in your body, temporarily at least, after you eat greens. But it would seem there's no way the chlorophyll that enters your bloodstream after that, that salad could react with sunlight. After all, light can't penetrate through your skin, right? Wrong. Any kid who's ever shined a flashlight through her or her fingertips could have told you that. The red wavelengths of sunlight do penetrate into your body. In fact, this whole page is getting a sticky note. That shit's fucking amazing to know. I can photosynthesize! The red wavelengths of sunlight do penetrate into your body. In fact, if you step outside on the sunny day, there's enough light reaching your brain that you could actually read this page inside your skull. Your internal or organs are bathed in sunlight along with any chlorophyll circulating in your bloodstream. Although any energy produced by the chlorophyll would be negligible, it turns out that light-activated chlorophyll in your body may help regenerate a critical molecule called Co coenzyme Q10. I've seen those supplements at the vitamin shop, CoQ10. CoQ10 is also known as ubiquinol. U-B-I-Q-U-I-N-O-L is an antioxidant. When ubiquinol extinguishes a free radical, it is oxidized to ubiquinone. U-B-I-Q-U-I-N-O-N-E. Ubiquin 1, I don't know, whatever. To act as an effective antioxidant again, the body must regenerate ubiquinol from ubiquinone. Think of it as an electrical fuse. Ubiquinol can only be used one before having to be reset. That's where sunlight and chlorophyll may come in. Researchers expose some ubiquinol, ubiquinone and dietary chlorophyll metabolize lights to the kind of the light that reaches your bloodstream. And proof, CoQ10 was reborn. However, without the chlorophyll or without the light, nothing happened all along. We've been thinking that the main benefit of sunlight was only the formation of vitamin D and that the main benefit of greens was the antioxidants they contain. But now we suspect the combination of the two may actually help the body create and maintain its own internal stock of antioxidants. Eating a plant-based chlorophyll-rich diet may be especially important for those on cholesterol. Lowering statin drugs, as these medications can interfere with CoQ10 production. Green can taste great. I hope I've been able to convince you to eat greens as often as possible. The problem for many people is getting them to taste good. I'm afraid too many of us suffer flashbacks from overcooked sl slimy green lumps on school cafeteria trays. Take kale, for example. Fibrous and grassy tasting, right? No. Oh, no. Sorry, he doesn't say no. Kind of bitter, too. Question mark. Some varieties, excuse me, are often more palpable, sorry, palatable than others. In a good supermarket produce section, oh, let me make a note real quick. 
you may be able to find three types, greens, black, and red. Nutrition, nutritionally, the difference among them appear to be insignificant compared to how much you, of each you'll be willing to eat. The healthiest kale is the one you eat the most of. I would suggest using black kale, also called lacento, dinosaurs, or Tuscan kale. Dinosaur kale or Tuscan kale. Red kale, also found as red Russian kale, or baby kale, since these varieties are all milder, milder and more tender than the more common mature green curly kale. See, I've heard bad things about baby kale and baby spinach, but I'm not sure. We'll continue reading, though. Start by rinsing the leaves thoroughly under running water. Then rip off the stems and tear the leaves into bite-sized pieces. Alternatively, after the leaves are removed from the stems, their stems, roll them up and slice them into ribbons. If you want to make it even easier on yourself, just use whatever type you can find frozen. Frozen greens are chapters are are cheaper, last longer, and compare and come pre-washed and pre-chopped. There is a phenomenon called flavor flavor conditioning in which you can change your plate by linking a less pleasant flavor. For instance, sour or bitter with a more pleasant one, say sweet. For example, when researchers tried adding sugar to sour grapefruit juice, people liked it better. No surprise, but within a few days, the study subjects began to like even unsweetened grapefruit juice more than they did before the experiment started. In fact, this re reconditioning of the pl palate lasted for at least weeks after the sugar was removed. The same happens when researchers dip or sprites broccoli with sugar water or aspartame. I know that sounds gross, but they are not actually making the broccoli taste sweet. They add the added sweetness merely masks the bitterness by fooling your taste buds. This is why they are so called secret ingredient in many collard green recipes is a spoonful of sugar. Certainly, if there were ever a food to justify the use of yellow or red light condiment to boost consumption it would be a single it would be the single healthiest of all foods greens i use a balsamic glaze even though even though it has some added sugar in it it would be healthier though to add green light sweetness in the form of something like figs or grated grated apples Interesting. The sweetness trick is why green smoothies can be so delicious, if not a little odd looking. Something can be a great way to introduce greens into children's diets. The basic tri triad is a liquid ripe fruit in fresh greens. I'd start with a two to two, no, a two to one ratio of fruits to greens to start with before tipping heavier towards green greens on the scale. So for example, one cup of water, a frozen banana, a cup of frozen berries, and a cup of packed baby spinach would be a classic green smoothie 101. I like to add fresh mint fresh mint leaves as well for a boost of flavor and even more greens. Fresh herbs can be expensive at the store, but mint can grow like a weed in your yard or in a pot on your window sill. Eating greens for breakfast can be as delicious as mint chocolate oatmeal. That sounds fire, by the way. Cooked oatmeal, chopped mint leaves, cacao powder, and a healthy sweetener. See page 388. When you are thinking about, bro, I want some mint chocolate oatmeal. That sounds so good. When you're thinking about ways to pair your greens with something you already love to make, the greens more pal palatable, consider mixing them with a green light source of fat, nuts, seeds, nut or seed butters, or avocados. 
Many of the nutrients greens are famous for are fat soluble, including beta creatine, lutein, vitamin K, and zeaxanthin. So pairing your greens with a green light source of fat may not only make them taste better, but will maximize nutrition nutrient absorption. This can mean enjoying a creamy tahini based dressing on your salad, putting walnuts in your pesto, or sparkling some toasted sesame seeds on your sautéed kale. I want sautéed kale. The jump in nutri nutrient absorption is no small effect. When researchers tried feeding people a healthy salad of spinach, romaine, romaine carrots, and tomatoes along with source of fat, there was an impressive spike in carotenoid phytonutrients in their bloodstream. Over the next eight hours, with a fat-free dressing, carrot, carotenoid absorption flatlined. Whoa. I wonder why. Down to a negligible amounts. It was as if they'd never eaten the salad at all. Similarly, adding some avocado to your salad also may triple the amount of fat soluble nutrients that make it into your bloodstream. In this case, the lycopene in the tomatoes. It doesn't take much, just three greens of fat in the entire hot meal may be sufficient to boost absorption. That's just a single walnut or a spoonful of avocado or shredded coconut. Snack on a few pistachios after a meal and you're all set. The greens and the source of fat just have to end up in your stomach at the same time. Another way to remove bitterness from greens is to blanch or boil them. But unfortunately this works by leaching some of the healthy compounds into the cooking water. If you are making soup that's not a problem because the nutrients aren't destroyed as much as they are displaced. If the cooking liquid is poured off, however, you could be losing nutri some nutrition. But even if 50% of these healthy compounds go down the drain, if the decreased bitterness motivates you to eat twice as many greens, problem solved. Whenever I'm boiling pasta, for example, I'll add a bunch of fresh greens to the pot few minutes before I'm ready to drain the pasta, I know I'll be losing some nutrients when I pour off the cooking water, but it's worth it to me for the convenience of throwing everything into a pot and getting my family to eat even more greens. Try to incorporate greens into as many meals as possible. I put just about everything I eat on a bed of greens, that way the greens take on the flavor of the rest of the dish. However, if you want to eat cooked greens straight, you can try adding lemon juice, flavored vinegars, red pepper flakes, garlic ginger, low sodium soy sauce, or caramelized onions. I personally like mine hot, sweet, smoky, and salty. I use hot sauce for heat balsamic glaze for sweetness, and both smoked paprika and liquid smoke for saltiness. I used to be fond of soy sauce substitute called Bragg Liquid Am Aminos until I got some more serious about cutting down my sodium intake. The best sodium-free salt substitute I've been able to find is something called Table Tasty. What's with these names? <laughs> I know, right? There are whole grocery aisles full of prepared, prepaid, no, prepared sauces with which you can experiment. Most have added salt, oil, sugar. So I try to reserve them for exceptional healthy foods, mixing yellow and red light foods together, like dipping your fries and McNuggets in barbecue sauce, may just add insult to injury. But I wouldn't eat half as many baked rosemary sweet potato fries. That sounds fire if I weren't dipping them into hot sauce spiked ketchup, and if there weren't ever an excuse to dip out of the green light zone, it would be for green leafy vegetables. 
During my bachelor days, I would regularly order Chinese food for delivery, usually broccoli and garlic. But broccoli and garlic sauce hold the white rice. Then I'd throw brown rice or quinoa along with dry lentils into my rice cooker and steam or microwave a pound of greens. By the time the delivery arrived, everything was ready and I would just mix it all together and mo and have more than enough leftovers. You can also find prepackaged pouches of Indian food online or at an Indian or natural foods market. Again, I use them as sauces rather than eat them as much a meal in themselves. Or sorry, I use them as sauces rather than eat them as a meal in themselves. My favorite is spinach dal. D A L. That way, I'm eating greens in a green sauce that's like the kale pesto principle. Use one green basil to make the other green kale taste better. Kale pesto principle. The health benefits of vinegar. Vinegar may be one condiment that's good for you. Randomized controlled trials involving both diabetic and non-diabetic individuals suggest that adding two tablespoons of vinegar to any meal may improve blood sugar control effectively blunting the blood sugar spike after a meal by about 20%. So adding vinegar to potato salad or to rice like the Japanese do to make sushi rice or dripping bread in balsamic vinegar may blunt the effectiveness of these high glycemic foods. We've known about the anti-glycemic effect of vinegar or for more than 20 years, but you're, we are still not sure of the mechanism. Originally, it was thought that vinegar slowed stomach emptying but even consuming vinegar outside the meals appears to help type 2 diabe diabetics consuming 2 tablespoons of apple cider vinegar at bedtime. For example, we are we're found to wake up with better blood sugars in the morning. For example, we're found to wake up with better blood sugars in the morning. Consuming pickles or vinegar pills does not seem to have the same effect. Do not, however, drink vinegar straight, as it can burn your esophagus. Or in excess, a cup a day for six years, that's 2,000 cups, was discovered to be a bad idea. Vinegar may also help with polystic overall syndrome. PCOS, improve ar arterial func ar artery, artery, it's spelled, it's artery, I know this word, I'm just having trouble pronouncing it, um, now I lost my spot, I'll just start over from ar artery, function, artery, A-R-T-E-R-I-A-L, and help pr reduce body fat. A daily tablespoon of apple cider vinegar restored ovary and function. And that's just a daily tablespoon, damn. Restored ovary and function with a few months in four out of seven women with POC PCOS. A tablespoon of rice vinegar was found to acutely improve artery function in postmenstrual menopausal women. We are not sure why, but the accurate, no, the acetate, A-C-E-T-A-T-E, -E, from the acidic acid in vinegar may lead to improved nitric oxide production. See page 136. Such an effect would be expected to help with hypertension, and indeed, there is a study purporting to show blood pressure benefits from a tablespoon of, a vin of vinegar a day. Despite folk wisdom to the contrary, vinegar does not appear to be an effective treatment for head lice, but it may help with weight loss. A double-blind placebo-controlled but, controlled but vinegar company-funded unfortunately, study was performed in which obese subjects consumed daily vinegar drinks with 
either one or two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar or a placebo drink that tasted like vinegar but contained no acidic acid. Both vinegar groups lost significantly more weight than the control group, though the effect was modest. About four pounds over a three-month period, CT scans showed the vinegar group's subject lost a significant amount of their visceral fat. I don't think that is a noticeable amount. Four pounds over a three-month period. Many other things could have had a fat, an effect on that. The abdominal fat that is particularly associated with chronic disease risk. There are all sorts of flavorful exotic vinegars to explore these days, including fig, peach, and pomegranate vinegar. Oh, that sounds good. I encourage you to experiment and find ways to incorporate some into your diet. I wonder if you can make vinegar easily. That's going to be interesting. Salad days. I think this page deserves a sticky note. I love me some salad. Having a big salad every day is a great way to burn through the daily dozen to base to a base of mes masculine greens and arugula. I add tomato, red bell peppers, beans, and berries, along with toasted nuts. I've never tried beans in a salad. And I wonder the difference between toasted versus roasted. Toasted versus roasted. That could be a fucking chapter. Toasted versus roasted. Stay toasty. <laughs> I have issues. Toasted nuts if I'm using fat-free dressing. My current favorite dressing recipe is a Caesar spinoff shared by Dr. Michael Clapper. Clapper. K-L-A-P-E-R. -K -E from the True North Health Center. Two tablespoons al almond meal. Three cloves crushed garlic. Three tablespoons Dijon mustard. Three tablespoons nutritional yeast flakes. Two tablespoons white miso. Three tablespoons lemon juice. One third cup water. Blend and enjoy. If you have high speed blender, you could probably use whole almonds instead of the meal. Baby spinach may have higher levels of phytonutrients than mature spinach leaves, but what about real baby spinach, so called microgreens, the seedlings of vegetable and herbs? As nutritional analysis of 25 commercially available microgreens found, they did have significantly higher nutrient densities. For example, red cabbage microgreens have six-fold higher vitamin C concentration than mature red cabbage and nearly 70 times the vitamin K. But they are eaten in such micro quantities that even the healthiest un upscale restaurant garnish probably isn't going to do much for you. If, however, you want to grow your own, you could have gotten have rotating trays of microgreens that you snip off with scissors for probably the healthiest salad out there. On a lecture tour, I once stayed with someone who just who did just that. Come on, Paige, turn. I've been jealous ever since. Microgreens are the perfect plants for the impatient gardener, fully grown in just one to two weeks. The one green to avoid. Dun, dun, dun. Although greens are the healthiest of foods, there is one green I caution against eating. Alpha Alpha Sprouts. I'm glad he said that because I've heard of that too. One Over a dozen years, 28 outbreaks of salmonella food poisoning linked to sprouts have been documented in the United States affecting 1,275 people. Of course, salmonella and tainted eggs sicken an estimated 142,000 Americans every year, but that doesn't make it any less tragic for the hospitalized and killed in sprout breaks. Alpha sprout seeds have all sorts of microscopic nooks and crannies where bacteria from man manure contaminated irrigation water can hide, so every home sprouted alpha, alpha seed should not be considered safe. I will never forget a presentation I gave in Boston. It was in a game show style format in which contestants from the audience tried to rank from healthiest to unhealthiest. The foods I bought with me, I brought with me, there was a lively cacophony. I haven't heard that word in a while. 
of conflicting advice shouted from a cr the crowd. You can imagine the groans when I re revealed that Alpha, Alpha Sprouts, a quintessential health food, belonged way at the top of the food to avoid list. Later that night, I was stuck with the sprouts after all the healthier and yummier items had been given away as prizes. I had just told my audience not to eat them, but I hate wasting food. In a do-as-I-say-not-as-I-do moment, I added them to my salad that night. Yes, they had been sitting in the car all day and on stage for hours. Yes, they were on the top of my game show's list of foods you should not eat, but what, we, what were the odds that... W that one particular package was contaminated. I went back to work the next day at the New England Medical Center emergency room, not as a physician, but as a patient with salmonella food poisoning. Ain't that some shit. So other than dreaded alpha, alpha sprout, greens truly are the healthiest food on the planet. You, can, you simply can't do better in terms of nutrition per calorie. Explore, innovate, taste, test, play, and teach your palate to enjoy them. Whether you sneak them into a refreshing smoothie, incorporate them into sauces and dressings, use them as base for main dishes. Or eat them straight in a big, vibrant salad. Just do it. Your body will thank you with every bite of greens you take. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been three chapters today. Three chapters yesterday. And hopefully, we are going to be reading three chapters tomorrow. Tomorrow I have a really extensive work day, so I don't know when I'm going to be getting around it. But we... We just read other vegetables. Just kidding. We just read greens. Tomorrow, I'm going to try and read other vegetables, flax seeds, nuts and seeds. And we only have eight chapters left, guys, other than the acknowledgments, appendix, notes, and index, which are the last hundred pages of the book. We're right around the corner. This, page, this book only has, like, the conclusion ends on page 399. So... We are literally on page 321. So we have less than 100 pages to read, guys. And we're probably going to read it within the next two, three days. So this has been an emotional roller coaster, mainly of laughs. A little, little bit of frustration and anger in some of these statistics. But um, phenomenal book. Great. Great information. Put in a great way. Um... With thing, there's some things that I think are outdated in this book, especially um, sprouting. I think you need to be uh, soaking your seeds in hydrogen peroxide to limit and reduce risk of um, bacteria growth. And he did mention the BMI in this book, and that's a little outdated. So uh, the more updated one is called the BWI. Um, but still, it's not 100% accurate. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, but for the most part, um, give or take a, a few bits of information, this is a very quality, um, in touch, impactful book that if anyone who wants to take a step into further their health and they don't know where to start, look no further than How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. Great book. And that's where I'm going to be ending today, guys. I got to go to work, unfortunately. So, take it easy, guys. If I have to leave you with anything, and I'm about to die in 20 seconds, I'd say believe in yourself. If you believe in anything, believe in yourself. You can do anything you set your mind to as long as you believe in yourself. There's always a chance, okay? So, believe in yourself. Love is the answer. One plus one equals love. One plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one equals love. So does every single problem in the world that you can face, that you can think of. It can be solved with love the highest form of energy, the highest frequency you can operate on is love. To love thyself, care about thyself, care about the world and others, and class dismissed. That's how we end all evil. That's how we save the world. Love is the way. Find a way, not an excuse. All right, guys, take it easy.
that's all I got for you guys today. Much love. Peace.